Wearing trances Going all to different places, different planets Watch your aura pass me by, losing balance What if we run out of time and second chances? And hey, what's up you guys? Welcome to the vlog So I have a meeting in like literally five minutes Um, It's Friday and i was actually gonna speak i actually have like a set topic for this video but i just thought you know let me let me vlog style it um let me vlog style it so i literally decided to start the vlog like right now um yeah i haven't had my morning green tea yet um i literally just got here and I have a meeting in four minutes now. <laughs> lovely, lovely. So this video is gonna be kind of like a spend the day with me. Um, and then I'm also gonna just talk about the remainder of the accounting professions. Um, so, sorry guys, I'm trying to unpack and talk. So hopefully you're not too distracted. There we go. So here we are. I'm drinking this green tea lately and I've actually almost finished the box. I really like it. Doesn't taste too bad. But yo, I was not expecting what it does to your body. If you know, you know. Anyways, um, I was saying that I want to address the remainder of the accounting professions so in this video i'm going to talk about um the tax professions as well and then i'm gonna speak about um two of the other psyche designations and then and then i'm gonna speak about um cyber as well as psyga so we have a lot to cover we have a lot to cover but i'm gonna join this meeting and i will catch up with you guys after the meeting i actually have back-to-back -back meetings this morning just two of them it's friday if i haven't already said so so yeah let me do that okay so i'm just waiting for the lady that i'm meeting with to join um yeah guys let me just give you oh <laughs> oh thank you jesus okay so update my meeting is postponed so i only have a meeting at 10 o'clock now so i do have some time to just get myself together today is a friday and i don't normally come to the office on fridays but this week has been a short week we had easter monday on monday which was a public holiday and then tuesday i just you know wasn't feeling up to getting ready like getting ready driving all the way to work it's not that far but you know the effort things just feel like they take a lot of effort let me just get out of this meeting quickly because the lady is not going to yeah so yeah so i literally um only had wednesday to friday um for work so here i am normally on a friday it's quiet you know it's quiet here to work but for some reason today people are here and i'm not sure why let me just take this guys i'm using this new thing well it's not new but it's new to me um called notion like I've been using it for just over a week now and literally I can't live without it. I literally 
can't live without it um so it's basically <clears throat> it's basically like a tool where you kind of organize your life so i have so lately that's where i'm putting like my to-do list um my weekly to-do list and then just ticking things off from there and then i transfer my top three onto my this thing it's really working well because i'm able to organize like my youtube calendar as well on here um as well as my monthly calendar so yeah really 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 love it loads I'm literally so hungry right now. I feel like I'm no mama So, um, let's go check by the cafeteria what they have. I think I'm trying to my this rewarding a Red Bull. I know you guys probably think I'm like addicted to Red Bull, but I literally, in reality, haven't had Red Bull since Feb or something, and it's currently April. So. I deserve I deserve the treat I just like how it tastes as well I like how it tastes as well and but I really don't want it to drop me oh. let's go upstairs and see what they're cooking today because I'm really hungry This is my dissertation. Welcome to graduation. Hey. Mm. Okay, let's eat. So I got chicken strips with sweet chili mayo. And then I got a can of Coke because it is Friday. <laughs> so we are being a little bit wild today. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and talk about these designations. So the first one that I want to talk about is the one that relates to tax because one of you actually specifically asked me to cover um, the tax practitioner one. And And the professional body that relates to that specific one is called the South African Institute of Taxation. So SAIT for short, right? So in this professional body, you are basically a tax practitioner. Now, it gets super technical when it comes to um, the different designations within the South African Institute of Taxation. But I think for the purposes of this video, I'm going to focus on two because I feel like those, these two that I'm going to speak about in a moment are the ones that you are more interested in, right? Mm. 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 Ah. Mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
feel so juicy so the first designation that i want to speak about from sait is the chartered tax advisor now guys this designation is fairly new it came into effect i think in 2022 which was last year literally so it means that it's fairly new so, so i would strike while the iron is hot if you are looking at a career in taxation so currently the transitional period rules govern how you can become a chartered tax advisor but basically the people that are able to register as a CTA are current MTPs who have completed a master's degree, which includes taxation model, um, modules such as MCOM or LLM, right? And you have to have had taxation as your sole activity or mainly or your main activity for 10 of the past 12 years so this is obviously for you know very specialized very experienced highly 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 trained individuals and highly qualified individuals it does require a master's degree but being a cta is also available if you were not previously a master tax practitioner through um, SAIT, okay? So if you were not an SAIT member or you were not um, a master tax practitioner, then you need to satisfy the same criteria. So you obviously need to have your master's degree, MCOM or LLM. You need to have that tax experience for 10 consecutive years within the past 12 years but then you are going to have to provide a lot more um, proof that you are competent enough to be able to get the CTA designation and it's ultimately up to SAIT if they're going to want to admit you as a CTA. So it's speculated that from later this year um, the transitional period will end and then you'll probably have to complete some kind of assessment of competence um, like an exam board exam or something to be able to practice as a CTA and also there's probably going to be like a minimum NQF level that is going to be you know um, implemented um, for people who want to study towards being a, a CTA um, and they're also probably going to announce the minimum duration that you must have worked in a tax environment. Um, that is still to be determined. So for now, the transitional period continues up until a time that SAIT announces basically what the entry requirements are going to be for a chartered tax advisor. Okay, so the fees for a CTA every year as sort of like a, an annual subscription, annual membership fee, you are going to pay seven and a half thousand Rand. Mm -hmm. Excuse me a moment. Ooh. okay so the next one that i want to speak about is the general tax practitioner which is the one that a lot of us are probably um gearing towards right it's the one that probably most of us here on this channel will qualify for so it's the general tax practitioner that everybody knows so in order to be a tax practitioner a general tax practitioner so you need to have at least an nqf um, level seven qualification this qualification that you have needs to include at least two tax modules and then the next criteria that you need to satisfy is that you need to be working in a tax environment obviously or you need to have tax as one of your main activities um, in your work you have to be involved in the taxation field right and 
you are required to be working in the tax environment for five out of the five consecutive years out of the last seven years and then you have to provide proof of a, a clear tax record and proof of a clear um, criminal record and then when it comes to the fees for your general tax practitioner your registration fee is a once-off payment of 800 rand so this is the same for the chartered tax advisor as well it's 800 rand to register with the body and then subsequently for general tax practitioners you have to pay um, 6,685 rand every single year as a membership fee or subscription okay before we move on to cypher let me just have a bite oh, my chicken strips yes yes guys i just got invited to a cycle event i'm just you know that guys get go get go get go let me see okay it looks like i am coordinating an event for cycle with cycle i don't know a psycho event i am coordinating a psycho event I, don't, I actually don't know what's going on i need to read that email but anyway we're not talking about that we're talking about the alternative professions okay so next up we have cypa i think this one is um the most widely known one as an alternative to cypa so cypa stands for the south african institute of professional accountants so this professional body looks at trying to professionalize the preparers of financial information so these are the people who are going to be working as accountants practicing as accountants um, in various areas of business governments what have you okay so i know it can get a little bit confusing because when you hear the word accountant you see you you tend to sort of assume that there's only one type of accountant but now you're getting to know that there's all these different kinds of accountant professional accountant a chartered accountant a certified accountant a business accountant all of that okay so i'm just going to summarize to say that a professional accountant is a person who is going to practice in an in, in an accounting environment okay so they are going to be the preparers of financial information like financial statements they are going to be the people who are finance managers at some point in time financial controllers and stuff like that so these are the people who are going to be the people that are known as accountants okay so how do you become a professional accountant through cypa so in high school you need to make sure that you are taking mathematics and english um, and languages as subjects and one of your languages should be english then you need to enroll and complete a bachelor of commerce so here there's also a little bit of flexibility there is no set um cypa accredited uh, commerce degree okay all you need to have is a commerce degree of any kind so it can be a bcom it can be a bcom law can be a bcom finance can be a bachelor of accounting sciences any bachelor's degree in the commerce faculty is the qualifications that you should be looking at and then straight after your undergraduate degree you enroll yourself in a cyper training program so this is going to be a three years kind of like a articles training program right and there's a list of these on the cyper website so if you are interested go and have a look on the website and it's going to list all of the places that have um, cyper accredited training centers so the nice thing about this is that straight out of varsity you are already going to be in a work environment right if for any reason you 
find yourself in a situation where you need to start earning money straight out of varsity then this is a good alternative because guys singabando life happens sometimes you know families maybe your family loses their money or they can't find your studies any further and you need to find a job immediately these are things that happen and especially in south africa so it's nice that they are alternative routes to be able to upskill yourself and professionalize yourself into having the best earning potential that you possibly can get to change your situation you know um with these videos i like to show that there isn't one way to skin a cat you know if psyche doesn't work out and to be honest for a lot of people i dare i say majority of people who start on the route it doesn't work out for them and i know that it can be demotivating and um you feel like your life is over if you are unable to complete your CASA degree because the, your CASA designation because that's what you set out to do but literally all of these professional bodies that I spoke about in the last video and that I'm going to speak about in that I'm speaking about in this video are amazing are professional reputable will upskill you will 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 take you through a rigorous training program where you come out a professional at the end of the day and will will also give you a chance to be able to earn as much money as you possibly can at the end of the day because you know it's it's important to earn a lot of money so that you can be able to do the things that you need to do in life right but i'm rambling I was just touched by the point that you can be able to go from your bachelor's degree into a cyber training program straight out of high school. I mean, straight out of university. So if you haven't completed a cyber accredited training program you are still able to become a professional accountant through cypa so if you have six years experience in an accounting environment um cypa is able to sort of give you an exemption when it comes to the training program and they will take your six years of relevant experience as an equivalent to the training that they need you are also able to register as a professional accountant if you for example have completed three years of your psyche um of your psyche training um of your psyche articles that also counts towards your training so it's also an equivalent of the three years you don't have to start all over again if you've already done your psyche um your psych articles you are able to um register through um cypa right um but it's not only cypa any other you know professional body that has a training program if you have completed it then it counts towards the training portion of your cypa training and then you have to complete a cyber evaluation or exam which is kind of like a board exam that is based on everything that you should have learned in your undergraduate degree and everything that you should have picked up in your work training experience so you basically write this evaluation based on you know what the knowledge that you should have or the competency that you should have at that point in order to be a professional accountant okay so the average earning potential for a professional accountant through cypa is round about um 390k 400k kind of but this is big this doesn't mean that it's capped at four hundred thousand rand um like i always say there's always give give and take on both sides the earning potential that comes with any title depends on you the person who wears the title the title alone will not get you the amount of money that you need to get yes there are some titles i will i'll be honest there are some titles that immediately just 
attach a big value to you in order for you to be like chilling 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 you have to also put your own effort in now it will just say title the title in to say when so it's that kind of thing so don't be discouraged this is just an average Cyber also offers um, a designation or registration for a tax professional as well. So here you need to have um, a bachelor's degree where tax is your major or one of your majors. Then you need to have at least three years experience in a tax environment. And then you need to write and pass a professional tax examination but you know the nice thing if you are um already registered as a professional accountant through cypa you are also able to register as a tax practitioner through cypa as well without having to write the tax examination so it's that thing where you can get you can get the doubles you know double 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 we always want the doubles that's actually a nice thing where maybe in your professional accounting career you decide you actually are interested in tax you are able to keep your professional accounting essay and then also be registered for the taxation portion i am planning a psycho event and i'm hosting it so yeah so I'm going to just speak about the internal, I'm going to speak about the internal auditing before we skedaddle home. So the third professional body that I want to speak about is the IIA, which stands for the Institute of Internal Auditors. So you might be asking yourself, what's an internal auditor? An internal auditor basically provides assurance regarding how well the business is functioning so the operations of the business so they will use test of the controls that have been implemented into the business to see that these controls are working as they should be and then they will report to management regarding their findings okay but not only that, they also look at compliance within the institution and they also look at risk within the institution and how the risk can be addressed or risks that pose uh, an imminent threat on the institution. So that is a very summarized version of what internal auditors do. This is different from external auditors, get guys, who look at your financial statements and provide reasonable assurance that they are free from material misstatements right so very different people very different functions an internal auditor works at the institution but has to exercise um, a level of independence and a level of objectivity an external auditor does not work at the institution they work somewhere else they come in to look at your books and to ensure that what you have written on your financial statements is free from any material misstatement. I hope we're on the same page. Okay, so in order to be an internal auditor through IIA, you generally need a bachelor's degree or an equivalent to a bachelor's degree. So here the, the IIA hasn't really designated a certain degree that you need they just clarified that you need a bachelor's degree or an equivalent to a bachelor's degree right but if you don't have a bachelor's degree you are still able to be an iia what an internal auditor through the iia because there are alternative parts for you to be able to become an I and um, an internal auditor registered with IIA. So the flexibility of it all comes into play here. So and then secondly, you need to exhibit that you are in in alignment with the ethical code that is set by IIA. And you must pass all three parts of the CIA exams. 
and then IIA also expects you to have some experience in um, internal auditing now your internal audit experience depends on your educational level so let me break it down if you have a matric certificate you need to show the IIA that you have 72 months internal audit experience or its equivalent. If you have a bachelor's degree, then you have to show 24 months experience in an audit in, in an internal audit environment or equivalent. If you have a master's degree, you have to show 12 months um, experience in an audit in an internal audit environment or equivalent so your the experience that is required for you to ultimately register with iia depends on your educational background so let's talk about earning potential right we'll start from like lowest to highest so as an internal auditor like your normal internal auditor you can expect to earn about a hundred and fifty thousand to about three hundred thousand rand per annum give or take on both sides as a senior internal auditor you can expect to earn about three hundred thousand rand to about six hundred and fifty thousand ish rand okay depending on your experience your educational background your work ethic, how you sell yourself, everything in between. But you can expect to earn anything between those two numbers. Then as internal audit manager, you can expect to earn around about 650K to about just shy of 890K. Then as an internal audit senior manager, you should be earning something around 890-ish K and above. Then ultimately you'll become a chief audit executive, which is sort of like director level. So you can expect them to earn anything over a million and it's then gonna depend on your experience, your where you are working, the industry you're in, um, and stuff like that so you can expect to earn anything from a million rand <sighs> sky is the limit to be honest <laughs> sky is the limit but it is a director level position so if you are looking into internal auditing it's a good path that you it's a good path to take because it gets you there it gets you a seat at the director's table and then the fees for um, IIA is around about 2,900 Rand per year. So it's pretty affordable if you think about it. For the earning potential, it's quite affordable. Anyways, guys, mandikotuke. Let me go home because we And it's a Friday and I'm done with my work but basically don't go away because when i get home we are going to speak about cyber then we're going to speak about two fairly new designations within psyca the agasa and the atsa and then i'm going to speak about something that a lot of people don't speak about but because i was trained at the supreme audit institution i feel like I need I need to put this one in there to make people aware so I'm going to speak about Saiga okay so let me pack up my things and I will see you guys at home from this world Running on a hamster wheel But searching for something I can't feel I just wanna
Cutting back the pieces of my mind I know how to run from the dark and So I've just come back from Ezitolo. I had to change my jacket or my over my overwear because it's quite chilly around the afternoon lately in Kabeha. So I just decided to put this um, jacket on instead of the poncho or the whatever it's called. But yeah, in any case, let us carry on with the professions that are an alternative to psyche so like i promised i'm gonna speak about cyber saiga and i'm also going to cover there's two more designations that are fairly new under psyche so i'm going to just speak briefly about those as well so let's start with cyber so cyber is the south african institute for business accountants so this specific professional body is aimed at finance and accounting professionals from every level okay so basically there are four main designations and how you would sort of enter your journey into cyber is that number one you would register yourself or apply for membership and the nice thing about this is that even as a student you can apply as a cyber member right and there is no prerequisite there is no like minimum criteria that you have to meet so your first step is to gain membership into cyber the professional body right and then your second step is that you have to make steps to work towards any one of the four designations that they offer so i'm gonna go through basically what the designations are under cyber i think let's first establish who can um, apply for membership so the first group of people who can apply to be cyber members are students that are studying towards some kind of commerce degree or diploma so here also there's no restriction as to what exactly you're studying it's just that your degree or your diploma needs to be within the commerce faculty okay so those are the students that are able to apply to be members of cyber and then the second group of people that can apply for membership is anyone who is working in a finance or accounting department or division a role or what have you okay and then the third group of people are people who are part of any other professional body who want to retain their membership in that professional body but also want to be part of like the cyber community as well so for example if you have a casa via psyca and you would love to be part of the cyber community or professional body then you're also able to apply for membership um, for cyber as well and then like i said you don't have to have a degree or a diploma um, because students are also included within the people who are allowed to register for cyber the only thing that's additional to 
that that makes you eligible to be a cyber member is that you need to keep the code of conduct that has been set out by cyber okay so if anything in your life contravenes the cyber code of ethics then that is the only way that you are going to be disqualified from being a member of cyber but yeah if you are in any of the if you are in any of the groups that i've just spoke about then you should be able to get your membership with cyber okay so let's speak about the designations that cyber offers so first of all there is the designation that's known as the b a s a so this is basically for entry level finance and accounting professionals right it's specifically geared at individuals who are working within like an operational level when it comes to financing and accounting uh, in a financing and accounting environment or department so these are your bookkeepers your payroll administrators your accountant your assistant accountants your tax accountants business managers financial analysts you know your operational kind of staff and with your basa you can expect on average to be earning around 303,000 rand per annum and then a step up from that is your second designation which is your cba sa so this one is geared towards um people who are in management roles within like finance and accounting departments these are your credit controllers your finance controllers and so on and so forth so on average with your cba sa you should expect to be earning around 534,000 rand per annum. And then you have your BAPSA. So this one is not for everyone. It's for those people who have an accounting kind of practice, right? So it's people who are operating as a practice. So if you are a tax accountant or if you are a normal accountant and you have a practice a small to medium sized firm or practice then this BAPSA is for you you get those people who don't want to be tied down to a certain employer so they will open their own little practice to consult for other businesses consult for municipalities government departments these people would be independent accounting professionals um, sometimes they would even go as far as preparing or compiling financial statements for other businesses. So it's people who basically are working for themselves um, as if they were a practice or if they themselves have opened a practice, right? So those people on average can expect to earn round about 600,000 Rand per annum. Again, give or take on both sides depending also on how many clients you service, what kind of clients you service, and so on and so forth. And then finally, your fourth designation in cyber is your certified finance officer. So this is basically the individuals who will be in your strategic kind of roles. So the most popular one would be you know your cfos right but you're also able to take on roles such as finance director chief accountant um accounting accounting executive and roles of a similar nature but it's basically like you will be in a strategic role or at the director's table like i said when we were talking about the internal auditors so on average the people with the certified finance officer um designation who also work in similar roles to what i have explained can expect to earn around about 1.2 million rand or just over a million rand okay and your fees for basically like cba and certified finance officer are more or less 6300 rand but have a look at the cyber website because there they outline all of the fees um, for students, 
for your entry level staff and as you go up in the cyber designations they will have all that information there so make sure that you're always checking the website don't just take you know don't just take youtube videos as the bible you know don't just take youtube videos as fact um also go to these websites and do your own research and see if these are going to be career paths that are um that suit you okay then we have your the two designations that are now offered by saika so this is your aga and your at so i'm first going to speak about the aga the aga is basically for people who have finished their saika articles and don't meet all the requirements to become a casa so for example if you haven't completed the academic requirements that are needed such as the board exam and maybe you don't have CTA right but you've finished your articles and you have your bachelor's degree which was psycho accredited so you have an alternative to when you sign off your articles register for AGA SA so this is going to afford you an opportunity to be able to be in um, a sort of management level kind of job instead of staying in an entry level job that is a similar level to when you were a trainee right because if you think about it if you go through three years of training and you sign off it's actually unfair that you will end up doing more or less the same job um, as when you were a trainee or you're getting paid more or less the same or even less than when you were a trainee so this is where the AGA kicks in to say listen we recognize that your articles added value to your experience it added value to your career added value to you as a person so we are going to recognize it so that you can at least be able to get that step up in your career when you um, complete your articles, even if you haven't finished the whole CASA syllabus. And the fees for AGA SAs is 4,500 Rand annually. But the AGA SA is not only for people who finished a psycho training program, right? You are also able to register as an AGA SA through psycho. If you submit something called a TEA, which is the training equivalence assessment, right? So what makes you eligible to, you know, submit this TEA to Saika? This T, <laughs> this TEA to Saika. If you have at least four years of relevant work experience, I would think that relevant means in an accounting environment or any one of the majors within Saika. So you need four years of relevant experience and you need to have completed a psych accredited bachelor's degree, right? So if you have that, then you're able to submit a TEA to Saika to evaluate whether you are able to register as an AGA. So if you don't meet that criteria, you're also able to be evaluated on the following criteria. So if you have a bachelor's degree any other bachelor's degree and you have six years of relevant work experience again relevant work experience will probably mean in an accounting or auditing environment finance environment what have you and on top of that you need to be already members of either cypa as a professional accountant, ACCA as either an FCCA or a CCA, or you are part of SIGA as a registered government auditor. And then when it comes to the accounting technicians, this is gonna be for your entry level finance and accounting staff as well. By introducing the ATSA, it's sort of like an effort to ensure that even the entry level staff in the finance environment or in the accounting environment are able to hold a high level of competence, right? So in essence, it's trying to 
professionalize everybody across the board. So this feeds in nicely into the last designation that I would like to speak about. And that would be the RGA, which is a registered government auditor with the South African Institute of Government Auditors. So as the name suggests, a registered government auditor will be basically a person who has been equipped or a professional that has been equipped to be an auditor within the public sector. And then this is how you become an RGA, right? So you need to have completed an NQF7 commerce qualification. So here they don't really specify which commerce qualification or which commerce degree or diploma that you need to acquire but you need to acquire it at an accredited tertiary institution the only thing that you need to make sure um, that your qualification has is you need to make sure that you're doing financial accounting at a third year level auditing at a third year level you need to ensure that there's management accounting or financial management however your your university calls it managerial finance of some kind, some somewhere in the duration of the qualification. You need to ensure that it contains taxation modules. You need to be doing some kind of commercial or corporate law modules. And then you can also have some internal auditing at a third year level as well. Once you have completed your NQF7 level qualification, then you need to apply for membership um, with SIGA then you need to complete 18 months of practical experience then somewhere in between those articles you need to be registered for gasp so gasp is the government auditing specialization program so you need to ensure that you are going through that program so then when you've sort of completed your gasp program then you need to write a GASP assessment, right? So if you've successfully finished your program and passed your GASP assessment, then you automatically qualify to be admitted to write your qualifying examination. Then when you pass your qualifying examination and you have your articles signed off, then you are officially a registered government auditor. Then when it comes to registration, your RGA is going to cost you around about 14.7 thousand rand to register and then every year after that you need to pay about 7,900 rand as an RGA. So I hope this gives you some more context into the professional designations that are available in the accounting and finance industry. And I hope it's given you something to think about. This is actually part two of the accounting professions that I have spoken about. If you missed part one, then go ahead and click here and I'll see you next week for another video. Thank you so much for watching guys. Bye.